So hi and welcome to another video here. Today I'm going to show you how to build a mining rig. These are some of the parts you're going to need. I'll put in the description all the measurements as well as showing you how I build it from scratch. I've got a SketchUp diagram as well in the description. All these wooden components that I bought today to build the rig were about £20 UK or probably around £30. US dollars. We can get them a lot cheaper. I did consider using a pallet and breaking that up and using that as a mining rig. But I thought I'd build it from some new material here. So there are some options. You're going to need to buy some risers, which you've got here. It's going to be for a 6 to 7 GPU card. These are the risers. You're going to need a saw. You're going to need some screws, nails, or no more nails. I'm going to glue mine. You're going to need some clamps. You're going to tape measure. You're going to need a GPU to mock it up against. This rig for me is going to be for small to large profile cards, so I can mix them up. If you're going to build it for the same size card, then the measurements might slightly differ, and you'll need to tweak it per card. This should give you a good option to be able to put multiple cards on it without having to hold the same GPU because at the moment GPUs are hard to get hold of or they're extremely expensive. Go check out some of my other videos on mining or gaming technology like gaming for fools. Check out my Tech Tuesday reviews. So the pieces of wood that I've got, this is a 900mm by 25mm by 25mm piece or one inch square wood. This is pine. You could use a cheaper lighter wood, a bit of timber that's not quite as expensive because pine can be. These are about £3 each or five dollars each probably. GP risers these were five pound a piece or seven US dollars. Again they were hard to get hold of. These ones have a USB port as well as a Molex connection so you can change them off your SATA drives and they come with a SATA and Molex converter. We'll also get a USB cable on the other PCIe connection as well. Like I said I'm going to use no more nails. This was around four pounds or five to six US dollars so I don't have to nail it but you could screw it. I just think it's a little bit better. You could use wood glue as well. I'm also using some clamps here to hold the wood in place when I'm gluing it or when I'm sawing it. They're around 10 UK pounds, so 12, 15 US dollars. Got one tape measure. I'll be measuring this in centimeters slash millimeters, but you can convert that to inches on Google. I'll put a link in the description if you need to do that. And one saw, it's up to you. This is just normal wood saw. It's not too expensive. I've got five of those 25 by 25 by 900 millimeter pieces of wood. I might not use all of them, I just need to check my measurements is but I bought a few extra and I've got the base which is a 18 millimeter MDF board which is 405 millimeters in width by 810 millimeters in length. I've seen some people use pine on this or shelves. Some people have built rigs without a base. I just like having a base. So let's get on with it. So starting off here you're going to need to create the rear positioning here and then measure the length between those two points. This came for me at 760 millimeters or 76 centimeters and then cut these pieces of wood down to that length. You could cut three, which is what I did originally, but I only used two in the end. The third one, it can be used as extra support under the front bottom of the GPU. I found that was enough support with one at the top and one at the rear bottom of the GPU in the end, which saved a few quid on supplies, and it seems to be pretty strong. So just cut these three pieces of wood down to 760 millimeters. So these are the three cars I'm going to use to mock up the design so it can hold a single fan GPU, one from here from Pallet, uh, which is a 1050 Ti and an EVGA 1060 super clock, along with the MSI Armor 1070. Now all GPUs are very similar sizes. If these 1060s and 1050s can sit on this frame, then you're pretty good to be able to support the remaining cards. These are the smallest ones I've got, and that's what I made the frame to fit. So what I did now was mock these up against the design. I put the PCI connector on the pallet here just to make sure that the size was right. Make sure that I'm getting all the measurements correct before I create the next piece. I'm just measuring up the main rear support strut height along with the mid support section, I'm going to call it, just to make sure I've got the right measurements. So, what you need to do is cut these to 240 millimeters. You're going to need two of these for the rear support. These are going to be the rear corner support pillars. So, once you cut these, just check that the right height, which I did, and you can see now they go in the rear corners. This will give me enough room under the GPUs for the power supply and the motherboard. Do these in place at the back. Again, I'm using no more nails, just a bit easier. Make sure you put plenty of glue on there. These are going to take quite a bit of weight, you don't want to break off. Next one was measuring the bottom section, or I guess the, the mid support piece for the GPUs to sit on. You can see here I'm just mocking it up here to understand what size I need to cut it to. It's a little bit of a rough idea, but it's the best way to mock it up, I found. The next step is to glue the 760 millimeter main support against the two rear struts. So you end up like a football goal shape. So this can be your choice here and how you want to create the front 
I'm going to cut the front support and mid support piece. I ended up mocking up my front leg supports at 130 millimeters and the mid support at 160 millimeters. But this will depend on what GPUs you want to put in there. You could make them slightly longer or shorter. Just make sure you mock it up against the GPU and ensure you have enough height for the to be able to be cleared once the GPUs are in place. So once you create those L shapes, glue them together. And then begin gluing the rear goal section. What I had to do here was use some boxes because it kept falling over to make sure it held in place. This was a little bit tricky, so make sure you got some good boxes or clamps to hold this in place because you're going to need to hold this for a good few hours to make sure it's sturdy. I had to use the clamps here to push out the base of the goal support because it was kind of bowing in. So I need to make sure it's quite flush with the edges of this MDF panel and therefore I had to put the clamps in place to stop that. And again, you make a smaller goal frame with these, again, gluing them in place with the 760 millimeter piece that you've cut out. So once you glued those, let them set for a bit. I'll let them set overnight just to make sure they were nice and strong. So when I came back in the morning, they were good. This is one of the problems with gluing it. You have to take a few days here. It took me about three days to build in total because of the time it took to glue. As you can see here, I knocked off one of the legs on the smaller goalpost when I picked it up. And the rear one is strong enough to pick up the MDF, but I need to glue it again. So I didn't expect that to happen. So it goes another day while I wait for that to glue. So again, mock it up. You can see the bottom of the leg sliding to bow there a little bit. So I'm trying to rejig it. And again, the leg breaks off again. So this is where gluing was becoming a bit of a pain for me. If you have got the time to drill and screw it, I would suggest to do that. I thought gluing would be a lot quicker, but it wasn't. This was a bit of a mistake on my half, but in the end it was strong enough. You'll see that later on in the video, but it was a bit tricky to get going. It took me a while here to line this up and get it to how I want it to be without making too much of a mess with glue. And just trying to hold it in place was a bit more tricky than I'd expected. Again, my clamps come in place here to hold it in place. The wood was starting to be a little bit tricky bowing in and out so i'm trying to push it out here stopping it from coming back in on itself and again it breaks <laughs> it's a nightmare <laughs> so here we go again another day of me trying to glue this together i'm getting a bit frustrated now i'm thinking maybe i should have just should have screwed this thing but in the end i leave it for a bit longer clamp it together with some more supports i think what was key here was to use boxes to hold it in place. This seemed to work very well. And then overnight it would set rock hard, but it wasn't very good at holding its own weight. So I'd suggest using some boxes. Hey. So let that set another day, come back to it, take all the boxes off and hopefully it's strong enough. At this point, if it was gonna break again, I was then gonna screw it, but as you can see now it's nice and solid. Mock up some more GPUs. This Acer 1050 Ti here fits well. Once you put the riser on it, it'll sit nice and flush. And this is where I was saying about if you want the additional support here in place, I decided not to have it, but you could have another one to sit on the underside front of the GPU and that'd be another 760 mil piece. And that'll give it a bit of extra support. So I'm just mocking up here my other board, SSD and power supply. Basically I glued these down with M3 tape to start with just to make sure they were correct. They ended up staying like that anyway. You could screw these down or use something a bit more sturdy. The M.3 tape here was pretty good. As you can see, this power supply will pick up the MDF, no props. The motherboard is a little bit trickier to pin down. I'd suggest screwing this if you have the time where you've got the screws to do it because this wasn't as easy and it wasn't as well placed to be fair. I ended up finally screwing this on on my B250 Aces motherboard. That'll show you a video of me setting that up. So on the next part two video, I'm going to show you how to set up the BIOS how to install the cards in Windows, add additional eight cards into it, and show how to set the PCIe M.2 risers in place, and show you really how to finish off this build. So now I'm just going through pinning them all together with the power supply for the PCIe's, the PCIe risers, and just testing it's generally working here, making sure that the frame's good. So I hope you like this video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to show you something else. I will be doing a video on the B250 setup as well. And until then, thanks a lot, bye bye.